Okay, so we're going to talk about why we use an edge D spill and a core D spill as opposed to just having one D spill altogether and why that's necessary. Well, one of the reasons being is the core D spill will deal with maintaining the skin tones, which we do not want to touch. Um, uh, depending on our liberties as a compositor, whether we color correct or not, um, definitely, you know, we can maybe play around. But we basically, before we hit color correction, uh, we want to make sure that the color skin tones are kind of left alone. And then the edge D spill has to do with the edges. So we'll be using a key mix between, uh, using as a mask, uh, our core mat to mix these two together um, and actually have best of both worlds. Maintain the, the center mass of our skin tones looking good and then our edges we have a little bit of play to help it melt into the background image which in this case I made it a little bit uh, lighter. In this case it's sort of like a, like a light tan color here so to give us less headache. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm going to put my viewer to this edge D spill. I just want to show you what that looks like. So I'll go ahead and jump over here. Now the edge D spill in this case, using, as I showed you before, the key mix between these two key lights uh, is basically, in this circumstance, trying to match the color and the luminance value of the hair. And over here, just trying to get this to match um, to the actual uh, tan background here. So, <clears throat> as you can see, I've done a little bit of work into each different key light and then using this mask to color correct each one. So I get this nice thing that will blend very easily into my background image without using edge extend, which we're going to get into later. Um, whereas the core D spill, you can see it's a lot brighter, but it has these super bright edges. So this obviously won't work. Um, if you can see, I have it currently plugged in as just being our single D spill. If we take a look at it in the final output here, you can see we have a halo of white around the character, right? Now the core colors look good, and this is the difference between the edge D spill and the core D spill. If I take a look at the edge D spill versus the core D spill, you can see that the edge D spill is fiddling with those little highlights here, right? It's causing problems, whereas the core D spill maintains the luminance information by the reintroduction and reapplication of the lost um, D spill luminance information of the green, hence it's what we want. It's just basically what we have in our original image. So the edge, we're going to basically use the edge mat for the edge and then the core for the core. So how do we do that? Well, the core mat, right, if we take a look at our core mat versus our regular mat, you can see here's our, our edge mat, or our full, full mat, and here's our core mat, which has shrunk in a little bit, right? So we are going to basically have uh, this area in the center be a mask, right, the core, to the, the core itself of the D-spill. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to go ahead and use a key mix here. Key mixes are used uh, a lot in this industry. And we always put the A input to the actual core because that's what we're going to kind of put on top, so to speak. And then B goes over to the actual edge D spill. And then the mask will be, I'll hit O for roto, put a roto mask in there. Oops, <laughs> way off, sorry. Falling asleep here. The mask input is going to be plugged into the core with an exponential blur. Now, an exponential blur was created by Mr. Tony Leon, Lyons, uh, uh, Lyon, if I'm hopefully I'm not tearing that apart. Um, and what the uh, exponential blur does is it's basically a blur that goes uh, outward and inward. So you can see it kind of you can punch it out, and then you have your multiplier here to kind of uh, change up the gradient. So you can pop out and you can pop in. So it's a feather that goes both ways, both out and in. So in this case, we probably want to bring this in a little bit so you can see the difference like that. And again, depending on how much blur you want, you can go ahead and play with that a little bit. So let's see what this looks like now. So now we have the, mix, the mixing of both of these images. Let's go back to our, our, our GBA. And we're getting the best of both worlds. So if you take a look, I'll disable and re-enable. The core is holding out uh, the actual core D spill, so we're not losing any luminance information here under the uh, goggles. These highlights are not going to puke, um, as we talked about before, where it looks like it's the color correction's been broke. Um, and, and the edges are actually, as you can see here, brown. Right. So when you take that and you m put that as your final output, right? let's take a look at what we get. Ta -da. 
So again, a beautiful result. Again, it's not perfect. We have issues here in the hair uh, due to the fact that, you know, the color grading uh, via the key light didn't get in there. But I can tell you it is a world of difference, world of difference than what we had before. Again, we have not included uh, edge blur, color correction, light wrap, edge extend, all that stuff, which can kind of help with a little bit. Edge extend, we'll talk about later, should be used ever so slightly and just, just a little bit extra to help kind of... Uh, take the edge and extend it into the alpha mat uh, based on the sampling of the, the color uh, pixels that are in the localized areas. Again, we're going to get into all that a little bit later, but in general, this you can use as a basic template. Again, this will be class 6 finish and allow you to kind of get a, a basic idea of why we use edge despill, core despill, or core and fringe mat. Again, we haven't got into the uber keyer yet, which involves the actual um, uh, despill uh, edge fix. But again, once we get in that, you'll see how we'll be able to take an image like a sunset and have a per region area uh, kind of blend the background image into the areas that were considered despill. Um, so there's a lot to learn, and we're going to move on to our next lesson with that said.